To a Fox News alert for you, North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un warning that his country will soon show a new strategic weapon to the world in the face of what he calls gangster-like U.S. sanctions. Now, that is according to North Korean state media. Kim also saying that his nation would no longer be, quote, unilaterally bound to a moratorium on test of nuclear bombs and intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, we are joined now by James Carafano of the Heritage Foundation. He's vice president for national security and foreign policy so great to see you today happy new year good to be with you yeah usually i see you when the sun's not even up uh, <laughs> so in terms of what kim jong-un is uh, saying or threatening this time around what are your thoughts well I, I i think what the administration will do is wait and see what he does so i think a trigger event would and a change in u.s policy would be Kim actually doing something. And I, right now, the American position seems to be, look, we warned them. We said, if you go back to testing, we will double down on sanctioning and isolation. The U.S. might even start doing uh, joint military drills again. But I think the U.S. will wait for them to actually do that. They've been warned. And so I think the U.S. is kind of in wait mode now. Yeah, agreeing to uh, not conduct those large-scale military drills was part of our commitment made to them. Uh, in terms of North Korea and their commitments made to us, have they um, kept their end of the bargain so far? Well, I mean, they haven't done the, the real provocative acts, which are the long-range testing and, and the nuclear testing. And I, I think reading this administration, that's pretty clear. Those are the trigger points. They mm -hmm. can yell, they can scream, they can do short range stuff. Um, but, it, but if they resume those activities, the U.S. would see that essentially as a, a breach of faith and a, a sign that they're not interested in the diplomatic path to denuclearization. Mm -hmm. and, and the U.S. has already stated what its response to that would be more sanctioning, potentially resuming military drills, maybe even preemptive military demonstration deployments. Um, and I, I think the U.S. would double down. This is the yeah. challenge, I think, for, for Kim is, is if he goes back to the old way, it, it kind of puts him back in the box he was in before. Yeah, possibility of more what he called gangster-like uh, U.S. sanctions. Uh, but perhaps very important, he has not shut the door. He did not say that they would abandon any um, denuclearization talks altogether. Yeah, I think I think that's important. That's why I think again the U.S. will will judge North Korea by their actions, not their rhetoric. And you have to remember, we we always have to say this: Look, North Korea and Iran; those issues are linked together because if the U.S decided to cave to North Korean demands, then the Iranian read on that would be, oh, well, if they're going to fold to the North Koreans, they'll fold to us. On the other hand, every day the U.S. doesn't con make concessions to North Korea, the Iranians say, well, if they're being tough on the North Koreans, we're never going to get a, a, an easy deal from them. Mm. So, so the administration has to kind of keep an eye on both balls when they when they think about negotiating. Yeah, and also, uh, as I had asked earlier, in terms of the world response to what's going on with the embassy in Baghdad and the U.S.'s response to the Iranian-backed militias there, North Korea, no doubt watching that as well. Well, they do that a lot, right? They look at each other and they play off each other. Now, I, I don't know if we have any evidence to say Kim's you know rhetoric is or is orchestrated with Iran's provocative action, or if the Iranians woke up one day and said, oh, look, Kim's giving Trump trouble. Let's do it at the same time. We just don't know that. Mm -hmm. But we do know that they talk to each other, and, they, and we do know that they look at how the U.S. treats the other and when they make their own policy decisions. Yeah, how our response is to one or the other, and perhaps an indicator as to how our response would be to them should they not listen to us this time around. Uh, so what do you think in terms of going into uh, 2020, the possibility of there being some sort of agreement with Kim Jong-un between Kim Jong-un and President Trump. Yeah, I think there's only one person that knows that, and that is Kim. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of the things that we always thought about was, look, why would Kim make a deal with Trump? He's Trump's really the only thing that's really changed in, in the U.S. negotiating position over the last decade if he didn't think Trump was going to be around to enforce that deal. So I, I think a lot of us thought that Kim would just play for time until he saw that Trump was going to get reelected. Mm -hmm. I don't know. But, but the, yeah. look, the thing is, is you can't guess, right? We don't really know what Kim is thinking. Yeah. And, and we have to actually wait and see what they do. So, That's absolutely so true. I think, <laughs> the, I think the U.S. has to stay the course. James, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but we have to go. We're out of time. Uh, thank you so much. And like I said, we'll see what Kim does.